Hi, Donna, we're going to get started shortly.
Hey, everybody, we will be getting started shortly. Just hang tight for me. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, sorry for my tardiness. I didn't have the correct Zoom link. <laughs> no worries, no worries. All right, so we are, it is 11.05, so let's just get right into it. Welcome everybody um, to yeah. the Big Apple Film Festival networking and mentoring sessions. Today we have back Tamika Miller um, mm -hmm. and she's gonna be speaking out sh short films. So uh, I just wanna take a quick moment, let everybody know, um, usually how these have gone in the past. I'm gonna hand it off to Tamika in a moment, um, but then following uh, her opening statements, if you wanna call on that, we are gonna be doing a Q&A. Um, if you could please, at the bottom of your screen, there is the little reactions button with the smiley face emoji. If you click that, the bottom bar, there's a raise hand button. Um, if you have a question, please hit the raised hand button. It makes it very easy for uh, us to see whose questions are next and get to everybody in a timely fashion. Uh, please do not hit the top bar. Um, all kinds of crazy things happen when you hit those emojis. So we want to try to keep it as tight as possible. Um, and that's pretty much it for now. Um, Tamika, I'll let you take it away. Hi, good morning, everyone, or wherever you're you're dialing in from. Hello. Uh, thanks for being here. Um, this I wish I could see everyone's faces, but uh, but we'll we'll. Uh, I guess if you have a question, if you could, please show your face. That's always helpful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I uh, just a little bit about me. Um, I am an episodic uh, commercial and film director. Um, I have uh, written, directed, and produced three short films, all of which have uh, won film festivals. And so I, I know a little bit of something about you know, the process <laughs> of, of developing a short film uh, and uh, specifically developing uh, my first short film. But I'd love to just sort of get a sense from hands, if I could, uh, let me set, kind of go to gallery view so I can see everyone, of who, of just kind of, who already has a short film um, made, I'll put it that way. Okay, hold up. Let me let me uh, go to gallery view. Okay, so okay, got it. Okay, and how many of you are in the stage of you're about to write or you want to write something, but you haven't written it yet? Got it. Okay, great. And how many of you are in the stage of you've written it and now you're ready to make it? Okay, that's that's great. That's great to know. Okay. Um. Well. 
bravo for you for being on here today and and you know and being uh ready to get it done you know what i mean and i would say for those of of you who are in the stage of you haven't written the script yet you know but you have a thought you have an idea you know i would say when you endeavor to write this script write, tell the story you want to tell um but make sure it's not a 30 page script <laughs> you know keep your script down in page count you know, programmers in terms of getting into film festivals, they are really also looking at the length of a short film. So, you know, maybe a 10, a 10 page script, you know, and, and one thing I would say is, you know, I love, I love researching and looking at what other people have done. So, you know, take a look at say the Academy nominated live action or live action shorts or animated shorts, you know, to get a sense of, you know, what's out there, what has been done, what has sort of, you know, climbed to the top of, you know, the uh, the pile of sorts of short films, just to really get a sense of what really is resonating with people, you know. Um, having said that, tell the story you want to tell. Now, but also be mindful that film festivals get thousands of short film submissions, right? And so you want to set your short film apart. You know, you want to set it apart. And I would say, keep it shorter in length. Um, and I would say, look, there's so much going on in the world, so much trauma, so much, you know, um, uh, you know, really, really dramatic and, 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 um, really dramatic things happening. And I would say, think about when you make your short film, you know, what about your short film can per perhaps be a little quirky? You know, maybe it's a satire, maybe there's a comedic bend. So, you know, and I'm just saying that not to, not to say don't make a film that's about, you know, gun violence, if you will, you know, you know, a, a pretty, which I actually made a, a feature film that was on the film festival circuit last year in 2023 about, about gun, gun control, gun violence. Wasn't an upper by no means, but, but it was, but it was successful, you know? Um, and so I would say, think about where you want to land in terms of genre, in terms of your short film. Um, the first thing I will, the next thing I would say is, how do you make, how do you get this film made ultimately? All right. So you've, you've thought about the story you wanted to tell, you've written the script, you know, you've gotten some feedback from, you know, from your peers, from, you know, fellow filmmakers on the script. That's very important. Let me say that, you know, I, I don't believe that filmmaking um, is a soloist endeavor. Like we really need each other to elevate um, the storytelling. So don't be shy, you know, send your script to someone you trust to give you feedback because you want the script to be the best that it can possibly be, you know? Um, and then I would do, I would do a reading of the script, you know? You know, if you, ha you know, have some actors, some actor friends, you know, um, have, you know, your, it could be in your living room, it could be on, on Zoom, you know, and just, you want to hear the words out loud, you know, that's very important You because you may hear something that's like, mm, that's not really, really landing. That's not really ringing the way I want it to ring. Right. So these are just in the steps and forgive me if you, if you're already sort of past this and know this, but I feel it's important <clears throat> to, to say this for, for those of us who are really embarking on this for the first time and have never really taken a script, <clears throat> excuse me, to to production, you know? And so, um, but these are some of the steps that you can do, that you should do to just give yourself a good chance of making something that's, that stands out, all right? Um, and then, I don't know where you all, you guys are in terms of, you know, if you're in film school, if you're out of film school and what kind of resources you have, but I'll say this, the very first short film that I made um, it took me out of my comfort zone because I I had to ask for money to get it done. And that was very uncomfortable. 
And I, you know, I asked, you know, friends and family and, and colleagues. And I remember the very first, I got a, the very first monies that I received was actually a check in the mail. It was an actual check um, in the mail and it was for $350. And this was from like a, a colleague of mine, wasn't a friend, wasn't a family member. And I remember getting that check in the mail and I think I cried. You know, I, 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 I cried because I, it was in that moment that I, that I realized, okay, this is, this is possible. Right. And so a part of the development of a, of a short script and a short film is also um, getting people engaged in your vision, in your journey. You know I mean? Talk about it. Talk about what you're endeavoring to do. This is my vision. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to shoot it. And, you know, if you need to raise the, the money, a little bit of money to get it made, then then ask, you know, crowdfund for it. Or, you know, if you have a select group of people you can go to, then ask for it. And it's uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, but but look, if 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 everybody could do it or were doing it, they would be, right? I mean, filmmaking is is a you we're a unique breed, I would say. <laughs> you know, and so um, don't be shy. Don't be shy where that's concerned, I would say. Um, and so my very first short film, I did, you know, get donations. I made that short film and that short film, uh, did fairly well. That, that short film actually won the Showtime Black Filmmaker Showcase. Um, and that short film aired on Showtime and I was given a $30,000 grant to make another short film. And that, that subsequent short film also aired on Showtime. My So my very first out the box short film um, got cable distribution, which was, which was remarkable. And so I'm saying to you, anything's possible, anything's possible. And I'll also say this, the very first film festival that my film got into and screened at won the audience award at that film festival. So, you know, whatever you can whatever you can dream <laughs> to happen could could potentially happen right and so you want and you are the captain of your ship and and you are the person who really is going to um have to rally the people around you to really support you in your endeavor and you can you absolutely can um i know this hour tends to go by really fast so I actually would love to kind of open it up to questions now, because then in my answering your questions, I can give you a little bit, you know, some more nuggets essentially versus just me talking. Okay, so if that's okay with you guys, let's let's just start to open it up to questions. I see we have some hands up. Hi, Tamika. Um, Hi. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Yasmin. I'm an associate producer and writer in the corporate branded content space, um, mm -hmm. kind of relating to what you said earlier. I have two questions. Um, yeah. They're kind of loaded, so I'm sorry in advance. Um, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering how was the pivot from directing commercials to short films and episodic? Uh, but also on a, like more personally, like I have a pilot written with like coverage address and I'm not sure what to do with it. Like, would you suggest going the script competition route or would you just make a short film based on it to like really launch into that new space? Okay. All right. So the first question was, how did I pivot from directing commercials to episodic um, and um, hold up, I'm sorry my gallery view just just popped off for some reason. I don't know. Okay, now I can see you. Um, how did I pivot from directing commercials to episodic and film? Was that your first question? Yeah. Um, well, I got my start working in commercial production. So I was I was a line producer. I was a PA. I, let me just start. I was way back in the day. I was a PA. <laughs> and I worked my way up. And, uh, and, and actually, this is my very first commercial was a Toyota commercial as a PA and Antoine Fuqua, or Fuqua, who you may know from the Equalizer franchise, was the director. And Christian Slater was starring in this like 
Toyota commercial for the Japanese market. So I'm probably dating myself a little bit. But anyway, um, that was, so I learned a lot. I didn't go to film school. I didn't go to film school, but I was a production assistant on films, on commercial sets. And I um, basically, I as I moved my way, worked my way up and ultimately line produced commercials, I was always doing something independently. I would go and do a, a commercial spec spot. I was building my reel. You know, and then and I was in the and and working in commercials became my film school. So I've been on a thousand sets and got to watch, you know, directors do what they do. Um, and so when it was so I just build enough work, you know, I would work a little bit and then go do my short films. Um, I've been freelance my entire career. Um, I I've never had a nine to five since graduating from college. And um, and so, yeah, the pivot was really in that downtime, being very intentional and producing work, doing a short film, you know, during a, a spec commercial. Um, the episodic was someone gave me a shot. Uh, someone gave me an opportunity. Uh, and specifically, that was Tom Verica, who uh, at Shondaland uh, gave me an opportunity. And I had applied to a women's, it was actually like a shadowing program to shadow an episodic. But, but because I had amassed enough work between commercials, short films, I had done a couple of TV movies as well. Um, you know, Tom Verica was like, yeah, you just need to be given an episode of television. And that's what he did. And that was Station 19. And the rest is history around that. Um, so that's the answer to that first question. The second question, remind me, Yasmin. Oh, yeah. So I um, I said that I have like a pilot written and like coverage address and I'm not sure what to do with it. Uh, I was wondering if your suggestion would be like the, the script competition route just to like get, um, just to get eyes on it or should I just make a short, go the short film route um, to like really launch into that space? I think it, well, it depends, but I'm, I think the visual medium is really powerful. I think if you're able to shoot that pilot, you know, and submit the pilot yeah. to film festivals, I think that gives you sort of a leg up, I think. So I would say if you're able to shoot that pilot, then shoot the pilot, you know, and the every, there's so many film festivals now that have pilot submission, you know, Sunday, I mean, you name it, right? South by Southwest you know, that has pilot uh, categories now. And so I would I would do that, you know? Um, yeah, that's the short answer. Oh, thank you. And I think Ludwig had a question. Mm -hmm. Hey everyone, um, thank you for doing this, Tamika, I appreciate it. And I wanted to say, Yasmin, I'm in a similar place. I'm, I like have this script that I had been pitching around as a pilot and, um, I kind of got to this place where I was like, I should probably make a short out of, you know, the script works as a short in and of itself and I can use that as a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. You know, make, getting a series made is a really far flung dream, but having something made at least just as a proof of concept, it seemed like the right move. Um, so that's where I'm at now is I have the script done and I'm ready to get it into production somehow this year. And I kind of want to, pitch to you know small boutique production companies people who might want to get on board with this and i'm wondering um between script and production um not so much with fundraising but i guess like should i be making a treatment should i have i have like ideal like indie actors who i think would like be down to sign on to it do i like i'm sort of in this place of should i be making some sort of visual packet or some or slides that have like the ideal cast or like a breakdown of the characters aside from just the PDF of the script that I've been sending around? Like, should I have this other asset? And do you have advice on how to absolutely. do that? Absolutely, yeah. You should You should absolutely have a visual treatment, if you will, a visual deck, a, a lookbook, you know, is another way of saying it for what your vision is. Because people will, people will like not even read the script <laughs> but if they see the the lookbook and it's like, oh wow, this is this is great. This is remarkable. You know what I mean? Like this, you definitely want to do that. And that's how you get people on. You know, reading words on the page is great. Yes, you know, it could be a great, a great script, 
a uh, great pilot, but you absolutely want to do visual treatment. And I, I love doing visual treatments. Um, I build my visual treatments if I'm doing it myself in like Keynote, you know, if you're proficient in design, you can do it there. Um, in commercials, there's, there, there's, there's someone who does my treatments for me. Um, but I would absolutely go that route. Um, and, and it should look, I don't know if you've ever seen various treatments. Um, you may want to go to uh, maybe a good, uh, I would research, you know, there are companies that, that make treatments for filmmakers and usually they'll have some samples, you know, some visual samples, uh, and usually they're like storyboard artists, companies that also have treatment writers and, you know, stuff like that. And, and to get a sense of what's of what's out there, because treatments, you know, there there are different levels to it, you know, and you really want to um, put your best foot forward. And the treatment as well as the script becomes uh, uh, an example of who and what you are as a filmmaker. You know what I mean? And so, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, do do a, do a treatment. You have. You and have sorry, if I could just on on that note with yeah. with regard to casting, like dream mm -hmm. dream cast, I do like in the treatment. Should you put like examples of actors that you think could play this, or you know, also if you have any advice about attaching actors before you have. The film in place or anything like that i would love to hear just about the that casting element of the treatment as well yeah i um yes you should put actors in your your treatment your lookbook that is um representative not that you're going to get those actors but like representative of your characters right so like if you were making i don't know kind of a comedic satirical film, you know, maybe you would put a photo of, of, um, I don't know, uh, Michael Sarah, you know, from like Juno, right? Like when you, when we see him, he's sort of playing a similar character a lot of times, right? Um, so you want to definitely put in your lookbook photos of the actors who are representative of who could play those characters, if you will. And in terms of getting actors attached, um, you know, you can engage a casting director, you know, depending on, you know, depending on what your, um, you know, your budget is, um, you know, you can actually engage a casting director to help bring talent to it. You know, if you don't have the connections yourself, um, that's a way to do it. Um, I mean, there's so many great actors as well. You know, from my perspective, yes, I always want to get maybe a more notable actor in sort of a short format, a short form um, a project. But at the end of the day, I want great actors. I want great actors who can deliver it, who's gonna make me look good, <laughs> you know, as a filmmaker, as a writer, writer, director. And so be mindful of that. Don't get so caught up on, oh my God, I want this actor. You wanna get the best actors, you know, because what's gonna happen is you shoot your pilot, um, you know, a short, as sort of a, a proof of concept, but the studio, the network, they buy it, they're gonna recast it anyway, right? They, they're gonna, you know, so they're gonna have a say and and who's in it. So don't get so caught up on um, getting the, you know, that actor, um, if, that, if that all makes sense. Yeah, cool. And it looks like Max had a question next. Max. Cool. I, I think my Zoom froze for a second, but maybe I'm back on track. Can you hear me okay, Tamika? Yeah, I hear you great. I see you okay, great. Okay, good. You're moving. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for being here this morning and sharing your time with us. Um, so your first short film, I'm just, I'm totally curious. What was your budget? How much did you raise? And then what did, what was the most that, what did you, where did the majority of it go towards below the line? I mean, none of us are paying our actors a ton for our short films at first. That's um, these yeah. are labors of love, but I'm curious location equipment rental. Did you hire a DP? Uh, how much did you raise and what did it, would you use it for? Well, now mind you, I, 
I came from production, right? So I was able, I was working in commercial production when I shot my first short film. So I actually had a lot of resources. I had a lot of crew that I work with all the time, um, cinematographers, you know, uh, you know, um, makeup artists, costume designer, all of that. And I also had relationships with vendors. So um, I, let's see, how much did I, I don't remember how much I raised for the short, but I think in the end, um, I think I spent probably, I think it was probably $13,000 actually in the end for it. And it was a period piece. So when you make a short film, <laughs> that's a period piece, <laughs> you, costs can go up a bit. Um, I shot at a ranch in LA um, and my short film was, was, was inspired by the O. Henry short story, Gift of the Magi. And if you're familiar with that short story, it's about, you know, a husband and a wife and basically each give up their most prized possession in order to buy the other a gift. And the thing that they give up is the thing they need to sort of complement the gift they're being given, if that makes sense. And so my short film was about the relationship between a grandmother and a granddaughter and how they similarly give up their most pressure, most, uh, uh, you know, their most prized possession, if you will, in order to get the other a gift. Um, I had Irma P. Hall in my short film who, who, I mean, that was, you know, she's an actress uh, who I really kind of lucked up and got, you know, this was me talking about the film. I'm doing this film. I'm making this film. Um, I had already, I'd seen Irma P. Hall in a film called um, A Lesson Before Dying. It was an older, older film. And I was like, oh, that's the, I want her to play the grandmother. Like I just sort of, you know, and I would tell everyone I knew and just so happened an actor acquaintance of mine had worked with Irma P. Hall in a theater production and got her the script and Irma said yes. And so it was just one of those things, you know, and then I cast for the little girl and, and other characters, um, other roles. So um, I'm just me, I wanna make sure I'm answering all your questions, Max. So did I answer everything? <laughs> what did I miss? I was just asking, where, where do you think the majority of your budget went to? Food probably. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a, like that's one thing. Location, like you, right? I'm sorry, the location. It sounds like you were shooting in one location, which is great for short film. I right? shot, I shot at in two locations. One was a friend's house, who donated her house, and the other was at a um, as a ranch where there was like a jute joint and you know like an old cabin. I I, I dressed as a jute joint. Um, had a really beautiful lake there. Um. And and so, yeah, it was a couple of locations. So, yes, I would say the majority of money was, um, and I shot that on film. We don't shoot film much anymore, right? So I shot that on, on film, actually. And so- yeah, you had resources. Well, you know, I was, I was, I was begging <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. I, that's one thing I would say. When you go into production for your your projects, your short films. I'm just someone who I want the crew because we're not paying them a lot of money, if any money at all, to really want to be there and do the work for me. So feed your crew well, the very least. If you can't pay them anything, don't have like, you know what I'm saying? Like just feed your crew well, breakfast, a nice lunch, like that goes, such a long way in just loyalty and people really showing up wonderfully for you guys. So, um, so yeah. That's great. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, and I know I apologize ahead of time because I'm going to mispronounce your first name. Is it Kuye? Yes, unmute. You go. unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's Kai. And I'm probably going to butcher Kai. your name as well. Biagio? Biagio. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. 
Thank you so much for hosting us. Hi, hello, oh, Tamika. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for doing this. Um, so I'm in an interesting place in my career. Mm -hmm. I'm actually um, been a producer for years mm -hmm. um, and kind of worked my way up at like two places and I'm in Brooklyn and um, I'm now the general manager of a television network and I do a lot with filmmakers. I work with a lot of filmmakers and we produce a lot of documentaries. Mm -hmm. um, we've gotten into scripted programming in the last few years, but I'm also a creative and I've always had these stories in me that I've never really kind of partitioned the time off to write and to really get into it myself, but I've worked in the field for a long, long time. And so I'm just curious, you know, um, like your creative process and how do you kind of, what's your structure around it and how do you kind of get inspired and mm. what, what's your day like when you're creating work, right. you know, like, mm -hmm. talk to me. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Hi. Well, well, bravo for you for doing what you do and, and endeavoring to make this transition, you know, as a creative, that's, that's, I love that. I love that. Um, I would say my creative process involves uh, visuals, you know, to go back to that lookbook and that treatment. I love pulling visuals. Actually, um, you can just an, a resource, uh, if you're not familiar with it, Shot Deck. If you, Shot Deck is a great resource for, for pulling great still images from you know, thousands of films that have been done, films and television uh, shows. Um, and I, that's a good way. Like, for example, right now, I'm, I'm actually prepping, I'm doing a feature film that I'm shooting in the summer. Um, and, you know, but part of my process is, you know, going through the script, really knowing the script, and really visualizing how scenes are going to unfold, and and visual and also thinking about how I want to shoot it. So I'm also kind of building a shot list of sorts. You know, um, I'm currently building a visual deck, so I'm pulling images from different films uh, that really are representative of what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, you know, also music. You know, that's also part of my process at times. If there's something that you're um, you're trying to convey a feeling, a feeling tone, you know, you know, create your own playlist, you know, to help you get into that creative zone, you know, around your project. Um, I'm. Let me ask you this, Kai. Are you? I know you're a producer, but are you endeavoring to direct? Okay, so you're, yes. Yeah. I okay. mean, I've directed before. It's just not something that I kind of do all the time, okay. but okay. yeah, but I'm also very collaborative. So I'm open yeah. to, you know, if there's another director that kind of can speak the language of my vision yeah. <laughs> better than I can, yeah. I would be totally open to it. But yes, I would be in endeavoring to direct as well. For the most part. Okay. Okay. I, and I just asked that because, you know, I, I love the collaborative process. I love collaborating um, and, you know, I think we absolutely have to tap our tribe, you know what I mean? We don't have to do it all. So if you're one, if you're a director, but you're not necessarily a great writer, you know, you can collaborate with someone mm -hmm. to co-write something who's a better writer, or you can ask a writer to write something, write your vision. You know, the story could be by you, but the writer could be someone else. Like that's okay. So you don't have to get so caught up on, oh, I have to do everything, you know? Um, just like you're not gonna go necessarily shoot it if you're not a cinematographer. Like you you can tap your 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 tribe and the people around you to help get your project done. So, but so but yeah, just to to cap, you know, uh your question a bit, just to hone it back in, I would say start to pull images and visuals. And I am often very inspired by all kinds of things, you know, like art, you know, go to a gallery, go, you know, there are all mm. kinds of things that really inspire me, you know, going to a live concert inspires me. Um, and that just gets the creative juices going because it's all artistic, you know? So I hope that answers your question, Kai. 
Yeah, it does. I love that. I love the freedom of just creative inspiration. It doesn't always have to start with the page because right. sometimes it's hard to kind of get those words yeah. down. But if you get the juice, yeah. the creative juice is flowing, that can really help. Yeah. Thank and and also that. too, and also too, again, don't be shy about tapping. I mean, you say you work with a lot of filmmakers. Don't be shy about tapping another filmmaker who's a writer, or what whatever, you know, because that also helps. I've done that as well, you know, where I've written a script and I was like, okay, this is okay. It's okay. But I know my screenwriter friend who that's all she's doing day in and day out, writing, writing, could elevate this for me and bring someone else in. And then you, you know, you elevate the project because you want it to be the best it can possibly be. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And next up we have Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, thanks for um, doing this. I'm just wondering if you can continue your story uh, with your first project and any other project about your post-production. So I hear a lot of people will shoot, but I find that the post-production is just like, especially the editing is just so important, but no one seems to talk too much about that. So if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about that. Absolutely. The, the post and the, the, it's like, it's one thing to get your project in the can, so to speak, but it's a whole other thing to actually finish it. Right. Um, I, I love the post process. So I've done three short films, uh, three feature films and, you know, episodes of television. So, you know, the process of working with an editor, um, I love that process. You know, I, I do believe in letting people do what they do because, you know, I, as a, as a director, as a creative, I have a vision and I can convey that vision, but my editor may, may have another vision and may say, you know what, I know that's what you're trying to do, but what do you think of this? Like, I like to encourage my editor, my, my composer to do what they do to give me something because maybe there's something that's even better than what I came up with or thought of, right? And so um, the post process, you definitely need a great editor. So much happens in the editing room. I mean, you know, yes, you film it and you create on set, but the editor, your film can be made or, or broken <laughs> in, the <ed> <clears throat> excuse me, in the editing room. So you wanna find a great editor you want to find a great composer to really, you know, to add music. And, and when I say composer, you know, someone who's really um, looking at the scenes and, and coming up with the, the music that's underneath, you know, not, not always going to source material, not always going to a, a song that's already created. I'll put it that way. Um, I would say color correction is, 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 is huge. You know, that's that's the your sort of final sort of uh uh how should I put it? That's sort of your final palette, your final painting, if you will. You know, when it's all finished, what do you want your film to look like? You know what I mean? And um finding a really great colorist is is key as well. Like these are all very important things to um to have to bring your project home. Um I will also say this. Sound is so important. When you're shooting your film, sound is very hard to fix. Make sure you have a great sound mixer and you're recording sound and it's great and there are no issues with it because the last thing you want is to get in post and it's like, whoa, you can't even use footage that you've shot. And when we're doing short films and shorter formats, we have less money. We have less resources to throw money at something, you know, to bring an actor back in to do ADR, you know, to re-record the dialogue. You don't have that kind of time nor resources. So um, I would say as you go into making your 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 short films or your short uh, projects, you should also be engaging your post, um, you know, your post crew as well. Your, your, you know what I mean? Not just your production crew. Um, I hope that answers the question. It's kind of a broad question, but but if there's something more specific you'd like me to answer regarding post on, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Do you budget like per minute? Um, it should be so much time for um, 
editing so much time for this or do you do it per day like how do you budget that time for um all your your lines in post production well if you if you've never done it a good a good thing to do is do your research before you start shooting you know ask people you know i'm looking for an editor to do this you want to look at that editor's work have they done narrative before have they what have they done before you know and then ask them what their rates are. Ask them what they charge. Now, what they charge may not necessarily be what you have to spend, but get a good sense of what the going rate is for an editor. You know, maybe it's five hundred a day. Maybe this uh, and there's three hundred fifty dollars a day. And but at the end of the day, you know, just putting on your producer hat, everything's a negotiation, right? Everything's a negotiation, and so. Um, I have historically budgeted, it's like, okay, this is how much money I have to spend, you know? And so I know that I need this amount of money for food <laughs> if I'm shooting for a couple of days or three days. And I'm and I'm going to put aside this amount of money for posts. And so you just divvy up. I mean, you divvy up, okay, I have this amount of money for an editor, this amount of money for color correction. And then that's what you say when you go and you engage you know, these different people, you say, you know what, I, this is what I have, you know, can you do it for this amount? It's either going to be a yes or a no, or, you know, like I say, everything's a negotiation. So don't, yeah, don't get so caught up on, you know, um, uh, well, I'll say this, do your homework. So you know what things cost. And then in the end, engage people who are able to do the work for what you have. But knowing, but you know that they can do good work. So, not to really delve like deeper in the point, but do you have like um, a general rule of thumb? I've heard like one day shooting, four day um, post production. Do you have something like kind of like that, or do you just take as long as it takes? No, well, you don't want to, yeah, I'm I'm someone who likes to, I come in, I make the project, like I'm not, I'm someone who likes to finish a project. So if I shoot it, <laughs> like I want to be done with post, you know, soon after, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to wait four months, five months, you know what I mean? If I don't have the money to do it all to finish it, then it's not time for me to do it, right? Um, and so, um, no, there isn't really a rule of thumb. It's, it's I would say, the more shoot days you have, the more money you will need to spend. So I would be very mindful with your projects when you're writing them, if you can set it all in one location or you can redress one location from multiple locations, then that's what you wanna do. Do not write a script that has 15 locations. Right. Don't write a script that has a ton of locations. It is impossible. So remember, so just be mindful of that. And and you know, um I would say that's probably one of probably the single most thing that that trips, you know, filmmakers up when you're doing your first projects, because you're not thinking like, oh, oh yeah, you know, I've written this script and they okay, they go to the car wash and then they go over to the, you know, the ice cream store, then they go over to the, you know, like. No, you you don't want to have so many locations that you can't actually, um, you know, uh, accomplish what you're endeavoring to accomplish. You know, you're putting all your money in locations. That's not what you want. So, so no, there is no rule of thumb. If you shoot one day, you have four days of post. It, it's not, you know, it, it really just depends on the storytelling, on the script, you know? So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? All right, I'll give people a, a chance to think of something. Um, so Tamika, I know that we've talked on here about proofs of concept, uh, mm -hmm. a short as a proof of concept for a larger story. I think the most common is probably for a feature. Um, and I know you, we've also mentioned before, you don't want your short film to be 30 pages long. Right. Um, but let's say that you don't have a feature, you've written a short, it does end up being 30 pages long, and it's intended to be a proof of concept for a larger story. What are your thoughts on potentially recontextualizing the larger story into maybe a series or a limited series, and then 
that 30 page short you recontextualize as a pilot is that something that you would say would be viable or is that i guess you know it obviously would depend on the story but i mean what are your thoughts on that especially like you know when you're trying to figure out what format your short uh, your story should be taking right well i will say you have to be intentional about what you're really trying to accomplish right so you're making a project what do you what do you want at the end of the day like what are you hoping to accomplish you know you can you want to get in film festivals you want you know you want to you're trying to get a manager you're trying to get an agent you want to you know what are you really trying to accomplish um i would say if you have a 30 page short film um don't make a 30 page short film as a proof of concept for a feature film i would get that down to 15 pages you know max get it down to, you know, and I would get it even low, less because you, I would say at the end of the day, you want the final project to be no more than 15 minutes. You know, programmers have to program, you know, so if you have something that's 20 minutes, 23, 25 minutes, it's like, uh, that's less short films they're able to program um, into that block. Um, uh, I would say be really intentional. If it's a pilot, now a short film is different from a pilot. If you are endeavoring to have to pitch a limited series or a TV series and you're making something as a proof of concept for a larger piece um, that's not a film or whatever, yeah, it will say a limited series, then you, you want to shoot that 30-minute script as a pilot and you want to have a, you want to have a, a lookbook. <laughs> you want not more, even more than a lookbook. You want to have um, the episodes. You want to know how the story is going to unfold for those ten episodes of a limited series, whatever eight, ep 10, eight episodes. So this is something you want to have thought thought through because you never want to be in the position where you're not you're not ready, right? So say you shoot this pilot. It's great. It's in got in the South South Southwest or Sundance, and people come calling. They're like, "Oh, and and you don't have, you know, an idea of where this story is going to go, right?" So, so I would say, I would tailor your short script based on what it is you're really trying to accomplish. If it's a if it's a feature script, and you doing a proof of concept, then make a tight short film that's no more than 15 minutes. If it is a limited series, a pilot, then make your pilot, you know? Um, if there's a world where you're like, oh, you know, maybe I can I can make three, you know, have 30 pages, maybe I can make three 10 minute, you know, uh, like a web series, you know, if you will. If there's a world where you can do that, but it has to make sense there, it's in the storytelling, you know, there has to be a cliffhanger of sorts at the end of that 10 minutes, right? So you really have to look at what you're trying to accomplish, but I wouldn't cut it up just to cut it up. Like you want it to be a great whole piece, whatever that is. So I, I hope that answers the question. Definitely, definitely. Um, do we have any other questions? I know we do, we do still have some time. I know we started a little bit late, but I yeah. know on our end, we do have, we have some, wiggle room i'm not sure to make if you have any wiggle room but yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm, I'm happy no, to go I, a little bit later than we usually would i'm i'm happy um, I'm, yeah so don't be shy guys like if you have any other questions and i let me just and i also let me just make sure i i want to touch upon all my 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 notes for you guys so i don't miss anything but if you have any questions don't be shy well i know i know one question just so we can have something to be on here um that we've kind of touched upon but we never really went all in on um, I know, especially when we're talking about producing, the big question that, you know, everyone wants to ask is how do you find your money for your projects? And mm -hmm. I know with shorts, yes, a lot of times they are less expensive, but you're not getting, you're generally not getting a return on investment with a short. So is it, what other specific challenges do you find when raising funds for a short? And are there different types of opportunities that you can pursue when pursuing a short film rather than a feature or a pilot or some other form? Well, I mean, you know, in terms of, in terms of money, you know, it's not just about money. It's also about like kind of in-kind, you know, donations or resources as well, 
right? So if you tap a cinematographer who has their own camera, you know, cause that's a win for them. Like they're not gonna, they need something for their reel as well, right? So there's also a bartering that, that, that happened. I wouldn't call that bartering, but it's like, this is what I mean by tapping your tribe, the people around you as collaborators, because you're all really kind of in the same boat, you know? Um, you know, so in terms of fundraising, you know, I've been, I, I've been very lucky because in the sense of, you know, separate from my first short film uh, and my third short film, you know, my second short film, I was given a $30,000 grant to make, you know, to make, to make it. So that helped, <laughs> you know, um, my third short film, um, I financed myself, you know, I just, I kept it really, and again, this is my experience as a producer, having line produced, like just kept it really tight. My third short film was inspired by 12 Angry Men and it takes place primarily in, in a, a jury uh, conference room and the jurors are negotiating the fate of, of someone. Like that's smart filmmaking, right? So that's one location, you know, 12 actors, feed them well, <laughs> you know, and, and just really keeping it contained. Um, let's see. But, you know, I would say I'm, 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 not, I'm not an expert on how to raise money. Yes, I've done the crowdfunding um, thing, you know, for a project in the past. Um, I've asked, you know, like I said, I've asked friends and family and, and colleagues early on in my career, but, you know, a big part of my career also has been like, okay, being intentional, I'm going to work this amount of time, save up a little money to be able to do this project I want to do. So, um, it's a hustle, you know, unless you have, you know, money to spend, you know, you, you have a rich, I don't know, uncle or something. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the type of answer, you know, you're looking for. You got to hustle. It's a uh, hustle. Ludwig. Ludwig has a question. Yep. Yeah, to me, it just, I mean, so yeah, of course, a lot of us are in the stage of before the film is getting made and where the obstacles in our way are the filmmaking process. But I guess while we have you here in your wisdom, I'm like, I want to take the chance to get some advice on, let's say the film gets made and we make it into festivals. Um, I, you know, I know that like short films don't really have a distribution path for the most part. I mean, you had two shorts on, on Showtime, which is awesome. But I think from what I understand, it seems that most shorts don't really have um, necessarily distribution but what they can do is sort of like help you as a filmmaker um, establish yourself professionally in the industry and so I guess I'm asking do you have advice let's say our film gets into a festival like South by or something like that what should we prepare like how should we be like you said you don't ever want to not be ready right when the when the call comes what are the things that we should do to prepare for that moment when you want to be there and you want to use your film as a calling card to to talk to production companies or studios or you know even like sales agents and stuff like that i mean are there things that you would advise us to like sort of have in mind for that moment yeah so i would say um there are more and more opportunities for actually actually for short film distribution um mm. um i don't have that list but but there, there are some, there are some distribution channels, some platforms, you know, that exist. Um, and also now there are film festivals, some of the more top tier film, film festivals, like if your film, you know, wins or, or, you know, does really well, a lot of times a sponsor, whether it's HBO might, you know, um, your film might get to be on one of those platforms, if you will, like you just never know. And there's so many different film festivals. Um, so, so I would say in terms of your own preparation, have a, have a press kit, have a bit like you, so you've made the film, the film has gotten in the film festivals, you have the film itself, but also make sure you have um, a, a press kit and or a visual, you know, you, I would say um, as an example, this is a feature example, 
Um, if you went to honorstudentmovie.com, that's my feature film that was on the film festival circuit last year in 2023. That's just a really good example of what a website could look like for a film. And you can also have that for a short film, right? And so, um, um, but in terms of being ready, again, it's about what it is that you're hoping to accomplish. Are, are you trying to get a manager, right? Because then you want to be going to these festivals that your film has gotten into, meeting people, networking, you know, letting people know, I'm, oh, I'm looking for a manager right now. I'm, I will tell you, like, you never know who people know. And, and if the work is there um, and people are responding to it, managers are going to are going to want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, they're going to want to be like, who is this person? Agents are going to want to talk to you because you've done something that not a lot of people do, right? Um, uh, say your short film wins a festival that's an Oscar qualifying festival. That's a whole other thing too, where now you have the opportunity to submit your film for to be shortlisted, potentially shortlisted for the Academy Awards. Like these are, I think you have to look at this process in terms of being in the film business as like these steps. You know, yes, you want your project to be a calling card, but be very intentional of what you're looking for and ask for what you're looking for. I'm looking for an agent. I'm looking for a manager. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah, you know, you're probably not going to make, yes, there, while there are distribution channels here and there for short films, you know, this isn't about you making your money back, typically, about when you do a short film. Right. It is about calling card, right? So, um, so yeah, be intentional. Ask for what you are looking for. And, and, and as many festivals as you can get to with your film, go. Like, try to get there. That can be pricey. I know traveling, but, like, try to try to get there and and because it's gonna it's gonna make a difference got it I mean, is there yeah. a way to like uh know who to net like let's say my goal is i already have a manager and an agent but i want to meet with like studios or production companies that would want to develop something further or maybe even just bring me on as a director for projects they already have like if that's my goal how do you find those people at festivals? Like, is there a, is there a way to navigate it, or you just sort of ask around? Well, if you already if you have a manager and agent, that's their job, right? right. So yeah, okay. you're doing your thing. You know, you're networking film festival. But if you already have representation, it is your manager and agent's job to get you in the rooms, get you in the in the meetings with these respective outlets and produce, you know, producers, production companies. That's where you lean on. That's the, that's the beauty of having a team, right? Mm -hmm. So where you're strategizing, yeah, you're doing, you're doing your thing, but they're doing their thing too, because guess what? They're, they're each getting 10% of whatever you're, you're going to potentially make as a director and they want to make money too, right? Off of you. So, um, yeah, don't don't just sort of think, oh, you're just out here alone. Like really lean into your your representation to help you leverage this award-winning short film you now have into getting meetings, getting seen, getting the opportunities to potentially direct something else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are coming to the end i just want to take a quick moment and just let everybody know um, if you haven't been a part of these already um, we do record these um, so the recording of this session will be sent out in an email in the next 48 hours or so um, there's also going to be a link to our linkedin uh, networking group so just keep an eye out for that um, if we have any other questions we probably have time for about one more question or if we don't tamika if you want to just kind of give us a little send off <laughs> any, any other questions <laughs> no okay well a little i guess i'll give a little send off i guess um well first of all bravo to you guys for um being wherever you are in your process you know i i think it's really admirable you know we're all storytellers and we all have stories to tell and um and i would just say whatever story you're telling 
you know, uh, be tell a, tell a great story, be impeccable with your vision, and and create the things that you need to create, i.e., a lookbook, you know, what have you, to help convey that vision to other people that you want to help you. Right, that's very very important. Um, be mindful that there's a lot of, of content. There's a lot of short films out there. Again, I'm just going to reiterate this. I said this earlier. So when you're making your short film, um, you want it to stand out. You really want it to stand out. So look at other films that have been done. What did they do? That was something that, wow, I didn't think of that, you know? Um, you know, like in my most recent feature film, it's a live action film, but I incorporated animation in the film, something I had not done before. And, and you know, I've gotten such a great response because of it. That's just an example, you know? So be very, be very, um, do your homework, be intentional and, and make it great, you know? And uh, yeah, I think it's great that you guys are, are doing what you're doing. That's well, all Tamika, I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much for being here. Uh, this has been really, really informative, really helpful. Um, and yeah, everyone keep an eye out for that email. It's going to be coming through in the next 48 hours or so. Uh, and we hope to see you guys next time. Absolutely. Take care, you guys. Have a good day, guys. Good luck. Bye-bye.